I mentioned that I got my gun shortly after meeting the Austin bomber. My gun was inherited from my brother. My brother got his gun taken away because an alleged undercover cop married him, had kids with him, set, like setting, set him up to be angry when they met during a, a drop off between the kids, recorded the meeting, and the judge put a restraining order against him so he cannot have a firearm anymore, even though he has just as much dangerous, danger in his life as me. All right, so um, I took this gun class in the class, they tell you if someone threatens you, like someone wants to fight you, or has a knife, or a gun, then what you say is, STOP! I HAVE A GUN! I WILL SHOOT YOU! That's what, you, that's what you're supposed to do, because it de-escalates de de the conflict, so you don't have to shoot them. Um, my letter, um, someone tried to have a conflict with me. They, they went up, and they... Fake like they were, they, they, they lifted up their shirt like they're about to draw a gun. Um, so, and then they threatened me with a shirt that says Magnum Shooting Center. They threatened me with a firearm. I responded, stop, I have a gun, I will shoot you. Actually, I stopped, I said, please be careful. Uh, I do have a concealed carry permit. Uh, I was basically taking the class and turning it into a letter. But now, law enforcement says, well, this is my discretion. I can decide that you get your gun taken away. That guy doesn't have his gun taken away. He's the one that actually wants to kill you. You don't have a reason to have a problem with him at all. He has a problem with you, apparently. I didn't do my due diligence in trying to figure that out. All right, so... I've mentioned that the cops like making me feel like they're going to kill me. It's like their thing. They really like threatening me. Um... I didn't have a choice when I started getting threatened by them when I was a kid because I was born in this family and I live on this planet and that's all I, all I did is I tried to be a good Christian at some point before I just tried to be a human being that tried to be a good person I think. Even when I was a bad person I tried to be a good person but anyways, so all I'm saying is I didn't have a choice to be in this family but then my whole life they're beating me up, putting me in danger and everyone's going, all right, you're, you're still crazy. All right, so here's what happened. Before my hunger strike, when I first started finding, about, uh, finding out about the drugs, I hang out with this girl from church. This is Max Lucado's church. And she tells me that um, one of her proper, this property she goes to all the time that she didn't own got raided. The feds interrogated her about some sort of bust. She didn't say drugs. Um, she tells me all sorts of stuff, like that the police don't mess with her. Like, she doesn't get pulled over. Um, and so, basically, her mom comes to my house. And the next day, someone comes to my house and breaks my door. My parents and I, we went out to lunch or something. Maybe, maybe it was church. I can't remember. I don't think I went to church back then. But, yeah, I did go to church because I was trying to meet girls. And um, that, was an, that was when I was agnostic. So... We go to church or whatever, come home, my door handle, it's like they broke my door because they wanted to intimidate me. They, they didn't just want to search me illegally via the Patriot Act where they don't show you the warrant. They wanted to break my door. And that was a reoccurring theme is they always wanted to intimidate me back then. And that's why when I finally just said, stop, we have no choice. The economy depends on us. We have to sell drugs because... We need foreign currency. America doesn't export very much. Um, we aren't, like, we don't want to be completely dependent on oil exports, especially since we have such a large population, a large population that imports a lot. And I was trying to explain it from, like, a technical perspective to people, but then everyone goes, well, actually, it doesn't matter how much you import or export. Uh, that, 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 tra that trade deficit ain't got any relevance whatsoever. Trust me, I, I went to Harvard. I'm real smart. I'm in charge of the economics for the... Actually, they did listen to me. Because uh, I explained to them my, my grandfather was pretty high up in the largest distributor of food in the United States and that we are farmers and that we are the, the country's food supply, but we're also the country's oil supply and we're also who makes the country work, but no one understands how the country works 
So basically it's like a bunch of Black Lives Matter people that um, think that if you can just like talk about race enough, then maybe our country will, will be better. But they don't actually understand like the logistics of our country. Um, and most people don't. And so most people don't understand that when you attack me and you're like, wow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this guy up um, and I'm going to threaten him constantly. Because, okay, so like what, what, what you do then is you, you, you threaten your own economy. Um, but, okay, so threats. Um, when I first got my gun, this guy at, at, um, at a restaurant, Outback Steakhouse, did that real quick. Like he like threw his arms behind his back real quick. Kind of like if you were trying to draw your gun real quick. Um, that was the first time someone did it and I talked about it. So I've been talking about this for years. So these cops know that I hate when they do this to me. Like, cause there's nothing that will piss me off more than, yeah. Wearing pajama pants with a suit. All right, there's nothing that will piss me off more than that. Not the suit, the drawing the gun thing. So anyways, after that, there was that lady that Marriott Hotels hopefully has a video of, of like when the when the elevator door opens and she's got her hand in my point in my face and I go whoa and um, they scared the crap out of me then I'm trying to think of all the times they fake drew guns on me gosh you wouldn't you can't imagine they've done it like probably probably ten times the time that the guy was talking about Quantico, we were, I was at the bar, he kept talking about how he's from Quantico, and it was like the day after I said the FBI should get out of Colorado, and then he does that, and I did nothing. Um, but I, I, I talked about it on the internet afterwards. I always talk about it on the internet, because um, you have to understand, I didn't choose my life, but then people are constantly, constantly threatening me or um, giving me a thrill because I feel like this is the end of my life. And so um, when I responded to this guy's threat and said, hey, uh, don't do that anymore. And then they go, no, he's, 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 he's menacing. It's like, all right, guys. Um, I told him don't do a behavior anymore. He actually menaced me. It's like he's, he, he's like, you know, menacing would be like um, constantly writing someone, I'm going to kill you, bitch. Like if you left notes on your ex girlfriend's front yard in her, in, on her on her in her mailbox or something, that's menacing. Um, this was completely different. This is a response. And um, if you don't know about the history of these people doing this to me, you don't understand. All right, so I don't have a gun, and like I said, they've broken in my house in the past, broken my door in the past, intimidated me a lot in the past, and I can't leave my freaking house, and I'm supposed to take care of old people, so. Um, honestly, I think that my whole life is menacing right now and I don't know what to do because everyone's like, he's a drug dealer. It's like, dude, I didn't choose to be a fucking drug dealer. I didn't fucking choose this life. You think I would, who would consciously choose to live in a normal priced house with the same exact stuff that a normal, my dad doesn't want her money. We're not, we don't like, all I'm saying is why would I fucking choose to do it if I wasn't forced? It's, but then I got all these dumb fucks that just want to ruin my life. They're about to put me in prison. They're about to get me killed. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get me killed. And then everyone's going, oh, he, he's a crazy. No, I'm not crazy. They're actually trying to get me fucking killed. You don't understand. They understand because they know, they know who they're dealing with. You think I'm crazy. But I'm just saying, like, this girl actually got raided. Like, and, and, and then they break my door. You know what? I, told, I tell my parents about the broken door. They go, act like it didn't even happen. Didn't call the police. I just went and they went and bought me a new, new doorknob. So I had to go, you, like, I had a picture of it forever. If you go to my old house in San Antonio, you can go see the doors broken. Still, it's got a scratch on the door. All I'm saying is this is a real, this is a real situation. I, I didn't choose to be in this family. These people all, like every fucking month, someone is either intimidating me or threatening me. Like they're either like saying, hey, I know where you're going. Can you imagine getting stalked like that? And then now they take away your gun when people are stalking you like that? I'm just saying, like, at some point, does anybody have any humanity? No, apparently everyone's just very concerned about Joe Biden's election. I'm just saying, Joe Biden is, like, number one person that wants me dead. And you say, oh, oh that's funny. It's not true. It's fucking true, dude.